If you want a piece of visitors, why don't you come and visit us at SQE? This is SQE News on SQE TV with me, Johnny Hurst. In today's edition, more SQE One dates, hurrah! Scaled scoring, what does that mean? Performance data to be shared with providers, sounds interesting. And sample questions to be made available at last. Let's look at each of these one by one. SQE TV. So let's take a look at the first story, more exam dates. Now, the SRI has announced that there will now be five opportunities to sit each of the SQE1 papers, FLK1 and FLK2, in each assessment period. And rather than being a single assessment sat on a single day, when booking your SQE1 assessments now, candidates can choose to sit their SQE1 assessments on dates which suit your individual circumstances. SQE TV. So let's have a look at the January and July SQE1 dates for 2024. Now there's a week of FLK1 sits, Monday to Friday on the 15th to 19th of January and July, with FLK2 dates the following week on 22nd to 26th January or 22nd to 26th July, depending on which uh, period you choose to sit your SQE1. And what's particularly interesting and welcome is that the FLK dates don't have to be paired, so that if you do FLK1 on Monday the 15th, you don't have to do FLK2 on Monday the 22nd. And when speaking to candidates booking for the January 2024 sit, most were actually choosing to sit FLK1 on Monday the 15th and FLK2 on Friday the 26th. They were trying to maximise the prep and revision time before the second assessment. But other candidates may prefer a shorter gap, particularly if they're travelling internationally to sit assessments. You could choose to sit FLK1 maybe on Friday the 19th and then sit FLK2 on 22nd or 23rd. As they say, pay your money, take your choice. And there's one more piece of interesting news coming out of the fact that we now have more exam dates. And it's this, there will be different MCQs asked on different days. So if I sit on Monday, you'll sit a different exam if you sit on the Tuesday. We'll sit different assessments. It was, after all, the only step the SRA could have taken when spreading each FLK assessment over a week to have five separate exams. That's obviously to protect the integrity of the whole assessment. SQETV Scaled scoring, well, what, what on earth is that? Well, before we explain, let's tell you that it's important to stress that there's no change to the assessments themselves. There's still gonna be 180 multiple choice questions for each of FLK1 and FLK2, but what is changing is how your final mark will be calculated. And this is where scaled scoring comes in, because it's inevitable that some of the five exams in a week will be more difficult than the others. So to even out any perceived unfairness, students' raw marks, in other words, the number of questions they answer correctly on their paper, they get converted to a final mark by scaling the marks in accordance with the relative difficulty of each paper. Now, the SRA have announced that each FLK assessment will be marked out of 500, and that the overall pass mark will be 300 once all these adjustments have taken place. So that's effectively a pass mark of 60%. Now, the BDI observers watching amongst you will know that the pass mark for all FLK assessments to date has actually been in the 50s. So does this mean that SQE1 assessments are now going to be harder to pass than they were before? Well, that remains to be seen. But the SRA would say, and I think in fairness to them, it's probably true that the scaling of the marks doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be any more difficult. It's just going to create this level playing field between students. And maybe those who get 60% under the new system could have been 56% under the old one. So, hey, 60 is the new 56. SQETV. Data to be shared with training providers is the third story. Now, there's been a huge information vacuum on pass rates for students who prepare with different providers. The SRA, though, has announced that data will now be shared with training providers in the near future. They'll give them anonymised details of how their students have performed. But providers have questioned exactly how the SRA are going to do this because uh, there's some concern that some candidates prepare with more than one provider. And also the SRA have indicated that they won't actually be asking providers to verify who is and who is not one of their students. So how good and reliable this data will be, well, we'll just have to wait and see. And it also remains to be seen how granular that detail actually is. And what about sharing this data with future candidates themselves, you watching on this uh, video? 
The SRA aren't fans of league tables, but I know from speaking to so many candidates that this is exactly what you want to see to be able to be confident when you book yourselves actually onto a course. Watch this space is all we can say for now, um, as the SRA have promised more data, but it still remains unclear what will be shared with candidates in terms of the relative performance of candidates from different providers. SQETV. And finally, the most welcome news for most SQE candidates, the SRA does listen, well, at least sometimes, because they will be publishing more SQE1 sample questions for MCQs. It really was a disgrace that they would only share 90 questions for an exam, which has 360 questions. But the good news is there are more MCQs to come. One thing, though, I would say before we finish this item, and this is uh, that even if candidates have bought every SQE prep course and practiced every MCQ that has ever been written by an SQE provider, there is still likely to be questions in the assessment that candidates will not have done a practice MCQ on. That's inevitable. What is important that your providers provide you with at least a thousand plus questions so that you can practice, but don't assume that you're improving your chances by buying thousands and thousands of extra and multiple choice questions. First of all, there's a huge range of quality in those questions out there that have been drafted. I've seen them and some are better than others, definitely. Uh, it's more about the courses you've prepped with as long as you've got a core bank of MCQs for you to practice with and understand in order to be able to answer the questions that come up. Yes, MCQ practice is vital, but having an infinite bank doesn't actually help your chances of success. SQETV. So that was SQE TV News. More next time when the SRA have more to say, so to speak. Do please like and subscribe, share and comment. This is Johnny Hurst reporting for SQE TV News. Until next time, goodbye. If you want a piece of this, why don't you come and visit us at SQE?